everyone, my name is Ajay and uh, today we are going to take the topic that is computer system. So that is the first chapter that we have in class 9 CBSE. So we are going to understand about what exactly a computer is and how it functions. Okay, so let's start it. So the first thing is that comes to the mind that what exactly is a computer. A computer is an electronic device which takes input inputs and does the processing and gives the output right so that is the basic answer that everybody knows so we're going to get into details about it what exactly it means of taking input and doing the processing who does the processing who takes the input and who gives the output so when we talk about computer so this is the basic picture that comes to your mind so this is how a computer looks like a desktop computer so if we talk about this uh, parts of the computer that is the hardware components of a computer so i guess everybody knows that this is basically a monitor right and uh, this is the keyboard and this we normally call this as a cpu right in a layman language we call this as a cpu generally with this we call this as a cpu and this is called as the mouse right so everybody knows that these all these parts together actually form a computer now for a normal people this is computer but technically this is these are just parts of the computer right if you talk about the monitor the monitor is basically used as an output device so whatever you do the processing or whatever you do normally we get the output onto the monitor we see the output onto the display right uh, other than monitor, we have the output devices like printer, which normally we take the printout from. Then we have the keyboard. Keyboard is basically used to give the input. We give instructions through the keyboard and through the mouse, which is also an input device. So these two devices are called as input because we type with the help of the keyboard. We kind of navigate around the screen. We click on anything that we want with the help of the mouse. So these two particular devices are called as input devices and then comes that is the CPU that is the processing it is used and we know that okay CPU is something that is used for processing right now all these things are okay till the time you're in lower classes but as you move on to the higher classes that is uh, class 9 10 so basically your definitions your technical knowledge should be much better right so we're going to work on this basically that is what exactly a cpu is okay so let's move forward so what is a cpu that's the question and the basic answer that i always get from the students uh, who have just come from the class eight or from the lower sections uh, from the lower classes i get the basic answer is it is the brain of the computer right exactly it is the brain of the computer but this will not work once you are in class 9 in 9 class 9 from class 9 you, your definition should be more of a technical more technical right so yes it's the brain of the computer and normally as i said that this is how your cpu looks like isn't it and you call this okay this is a cpu the box that you have just placed next to your monitor or it is just placed uh, below your table right and you call that as a cpu basically that is not your cpu it is a cpu cabinet understand it it is just a cpu cabinet that you you actually refer that as a cpu but it is not a cpu it is a cpu cabinet why it is called as cpu cabinet is because we have many things in the CPU cabinet. Inside that, we have a RAM, we have a ROM, we have very important, that is a processor, and we have a hard disk, okay? So these are the things that we have inside this CPU. And all these parts, like the RAM, ROM, processor, hard disk, everything is placed on a on a motherboard so it's a kind of a circuit board normally if you open the cpu cabinet you will see a green color board inside and on that board we have this ram roms processor hard disk everything is attached onto it okay so motherboard i just uh, missed out but motherboard is the main circuit 
board on which all these parts are placed understand it so these are the things that is inside the cpu cabinet okay so what you look at over this picture is a cpu cabinet please understand this what exactly is a cpu we'll come to that okay and these are the parts these are the uh, other parts that are there on that uh, motherboard okay in fact there are other things also but these are the major things that we are going to talk about okay so let's move forward so yes cpu is the brain of the co computer and we are going to learn one by one and we'll come to the cpu also okay so one by one we will just understand what is the ram rom what is the processor what is the hard disk okay we, one by one we will understand and then finally we will come to the word cpu okay so let's move forward so what is a ram i always ask this question to the students what is a ram and everybody says random access memory right that's the full form that they know yes it's perfectly right that's the full form that is random access memory but as i said now you're in class higher classes you should have a much better answer ram i never asked you about the full form i'm asking what exactly is ram and the answer to this is ram is required for program execution always keep that thing in your mind anybody ask you in an interview a simple question what is ram a ram is a random access memory and it is used for program execution understand this word program execution which means that every program that you run onto a computer gets executed through ram please understand this every program now what do you mean by the word program out here what do you mean by the word program program means over here refers to the software that you're running onto your computer for example you're running your video game you started a video game so your video game is a program so to make that program execute so once you give a double click onto any application any for example a video game so that video game will start running right but how does it run it is a program which gets loaded onto the RAM. That particular program gets loaded onto the RAM and through the RAM, okay, the program gets executed. I mean, it gets stored through the RAM and then through the CPU, it gets executed, understand it, okay. But for the CPU to execute this program, it is required to load this program onto the RAM, okay. Because RAM is a pretty fast memory. RAM is a memory, but it is a very fast memory, understand it. Every program that you run onto your computer gets executed through the RAM. It gets loaded onto a RAM, okay? So for example, there is a program one, that's a video game. Program two, that is a music that you're playing at, uh, at the background. So you're, you're multitasking it, right? You can play music at the same time. You can play video game. You can do some other work. You're working on MS Excel, PowerPoint, and at the background, the music is playing. You can do this, right? Because computer does multitasking pretty easily. So these are the around four programs that I've shown over here, program one, program two. So these are like many programs that, uh, that are running by the user. And in fact, there are many other programs that are running uh, and it is uh, run by the OS. That we will see it later. So you can do a lot of multitasking. So what happens is your RAM, every program since gets executed or gets loaded onto RAM, it is must that your RAM should be of, RAM should be of a higher capacity. So normally in, in market, if you go, we have a 2 GB RAM, we have a 4 GB RAM and an 8 GB RAM. We also have 16 GB RAM, right? So these are the RAMs that you get. So normally if you go to buy a PC into a showroom and the executive will ask you like, what is your configuration that you're looking for? So if you don't answer him back, then he will come up uh, with uh, his own configuration and he will tell you, okay, you go for Core i processor and a 4 GB RAM or a 8 GB RAM and he will ask suppose if we tell him okay I want to run uh, you know Photoshop into it or I'll be working on Photoshop now Photoshop is an application which is a very heavy application it's a it is a big software to run for such a program to run smoothly you require a higher capacity RAM so you at least require 8 GB of RAM if you're running on uh, if you're running some heavy applications like uh, Photoshop 
or uh, some multimedia applications, VFX and all that, if you're working on that, you definitely require a higher capacity RAM. Why? Is because if you have a lower capacity RAM, for example, if I have a 2 GB RAM, and if I'm trying to run higher applications, which are very heavy, which are big softwares, so definitely what happens is since the, uh, the RAM is less, and if you try to run that heavy application, so after a point of time, your RAM will get full. And once that happens, then your computer starts working pretty slow. And it may happen that your, uh, your computer can get hacked. Okay, so understand one thing. So that is, is you know, always the, you know, uh, the sales executive always tells uh, to the customers that you should always have a better RAM. If you want that the thing should run smoothly, you go for a better RAM. So if you have, uh, if you're doing some basic operations or a bit of uh, one heavy application, so I guess 4 GB RAM can work. But if it's 8 GB, that will be uh, far, far better. Okay, so better the RAM capacity, the better the pro your system will work along with your processor. Now that word processor, again, I'm going to come back to it, okay? So you require a better RAM for making your computer to work smoothly. And understand one thing, that RAM is a volatile memory. Volatile memory. Now what do you mean by the word volatile? Volatile memory means RAM is a kind of a memory which stores the program or you can say it stores the program data into it till the time there is a power supply to it. For example, this computer is on, so the, definitely the data, the RAM will be having a lot of program data onto it. The moment I switch off this computer, the data from the RAM will get erased. It cannot retain its data after your computer is off. So RAM is called as volatile memory. Why it is called as volatile? Because the data will remain into the RAM till the point there is a power supply to it. Once there is no power supply, the data into the RAM will automatically get erased. RAM is not meant to retain the data, understand it. So why do we have RAM? We have RAM only because of one factor and that is because it is a very fast memory, okay? It is a very, very fast memory. So what do you mean by volatile memory, students? Volatile memory means a memory which can, which will retain the data till the point there is a power supply to it. If there is no power supply, the data will get erased automatically, okay? So that is volatile memory. If you look at this diagram over here, I've said program one, program two, three, four, and there is something called as OS also over here. Now why we have OS over here? Even that we will come to this, to the next slide, okay? So this is about the RAM. So now henceforth anybody asks you, what is a RAM? RAM is a random access memory and it is used for program execution. Every program that you run onto a computer, it gets loaded onto a RAM and from RAM then it gets executed by the CPU, understand it. Okay, so this is the answer for RAM. Now let us move forward with more interesting that is called as what is a ROM? And if I ask this question to anybody, they always give the full form that is read-only memory. Yes, it is read-only memory. And the word read-only memory also has a meaning. Okay, so let us go for the definition for this now. Read-only memory, ROM is required for booting your computer, which means whenever you start your computer, you boot your computer, then your OS gets loaded and then you, if you're using a Windows OS, you will see the Windows logo and then slowly then your desktop will be in front of you, right? That is what happens. The, uh, uh, you know, then your computer starts. So basically, uh, that is how a computer uh, ROM works. A ROM is basically used for booting your computer. To start your computer, we require a ROM. But understand one thing: ROM is not something that you 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 upgrade. You don't say that okay, okay I require a four uh, GB RAM and I require a two GB ROM. You don't say that, right? ROM is something that is inbuilt into your motherboard. Okay, it is inbuilt into your motherboard. You don't separately buy it. It always comes in build with the motherboard. And ROM is required for booting the system, which means 
that there is a program which is called as bootstrap program a program called as bootstrap program which is permanently stored onto your rom okay that program is permanently stored onto your rom okay which means even if the computer is off the program is present in that memory even if the computer is off there is no power supply the program still is present in in your rom memory so what do you mean by this rom is basically a non volatile memory rom is basically a non volatile why non volatile is because even if there is no power supply it will retain the data even if there is no power supply it will retain the data such kind of memory is called as non volatile memory okay now next why exactly what is this bootstrap program the thing is children that uh, when your computer is off okay the os itself is also not present anywhere it is only present onto the hard disk a copy of that is present onto the hard disk understand it so when you boot your program the bootstrap program which is present onto the rom what it does is it will take a copy of that os okay and it will load that os onto the ram as i said the same diagram you can see os over here you know every program gets executed through a ram for that program to get executed it is must that it is required in the ram so now os itself is also kind of a software it is also kind of a program even that has to be loaded onto the ram so who will do that that rom does and rom will do that with the help of a bootstrap program which will pick a copy from the hard disk it has a copy of the os from the hard disk and it will it will load that copy onto the ram and then once the os gets loaded onto the ram the os takes control of your system and then you will see the windows logo and every the desktop that everything comes in front of you right so that is how the things function so rom is a non volatile memory why even if there is no power supply the program is present onto your rom understand it so every, anything that any memory that retains the data any memory that retains the data will be called as non volatile memory okay i hope these things are now very clear to you why do we require rom rom is used for booting the system booting your computer to start your computer it will load the os onto the ram and then the os take control of your entire machine okay without the uh, without the rom your system will not start children understand it okay so let's move forward now what is a hard disk even hard disk is a memory can you guess what kind of uh, memory hard disk will be and why do we require a hard disk a hard disk is used to store data permanently it stores user data so basically you are, you are storing a lot of music file video files and your you know lot of data that you have you store where do you store that you normally store that onto the d drive e drive right you don't normally store that into a c drive or your hardware engineers always says that okay uh, whatever you store you better store that onto the d drive e drive but don't store anything of your user data onto the c drive why does he say that your hardware engineer always will promote you always will tell you to to store the data on the rest of the drives but not the c drive why children this is because in case your system gets crashed then only the c drive will get formatted so even if your data is uh, your data is present on d drive or some other drives that will not get affected so your data will always be safe so hard disk it is basically used to store your user data whatever your music files or whatever you work you have done on your software everything gets stored in fact all the softwares all the copy of the software all the copy in fact the copy of the os also is stored on your hard disk normally if you see the c drive c drive normally will have all the windows file isn't it so the os itself is present onto the c drive and the rest of the drives you store your data so 
now the question is if there is no power supply i have stored some of my music file video files and there is around uh, you know 20 gb of data that i have stored or 50 gb of data i have stored of musics and videos so and there is no power supply do you think your data will be retained it is present or it is not present definitely it is present right now next time when you switch on your computer you can access your data which means if there is no power supply in your system still your data is present so can you guess what kind of memory is hard disk hard disk is a non volatile memory why because it can easily retain your data so ram rom hard disk all these are memories but they have uh, they act differently ram it cannot retain the memory okay only it retains the memory till the point there is power supply rom it has a program that is permanently stored and it is only used to read the program you cannot you don't write any anything onto the ROM and hard disk is something that is used for the user data the system programs everything gets stored onto your hard disk so that is a non-volatile memory ROM is also non-volatile RAM is a volatile memory right so it retains the data even if there is no power supply okay one more question what about pen drive what kind of memory is pen drive is it a volatile or it's a non volatile definitely it's a non volatile why because you plug in the uh, uh, the pen drive into the usb port you copy the data and then you remove the data, uh, the pen drive and you keep it in the pocket so your data is still there in your pen drive right so which kind of memory is that it's a non volatile memory okay so that is why what, what uh, hard disk is all about now one more question that arises or it may arise into your mind since hard disk normally we have a huge storage of hard disk normally today in today's time 500 gb is like a very very normal thing so we we have normally one tb of hard disk two tb of hard disk in the market that we have available right so that's a huge storage of data and ram we always take around 8 gb 8 gb and 1 tb there's a big huge difference so why is it not possible that uh, the computer can use the hard disk space for executing its program why do we separately require a ram for execution of program the answer is very simple it's because your hard disk is a very complex hardware and it is a very slow device you can say so anything you want to pick up from a hard disk it takes a quite a bit of time as compared to the ram the only factor that works for a ram is because it's a very fast memory okay so the data getting stored or uh, you know it is it, it uh, the execution also takes pretty fast so ram is a fast memory hard disk as compared to ram is pretty slow so we cannot actually use a hard disk in fact there are certain situation where hard disk is also used by our os for program execution and that goes into the that is the part of paging okay how a computer what is paging and how, what exactly it is that is out of syllabus at this point so we will talk about paging in some other lecture or if we have some uh, if you have some other time we will talk about paging and how it works but understand hard disk can never be used for program execution for that we require a separate memory a memory that is very fast and for that we have ram okay so that is about the hard disk now comes what is a processor and a cpu and normally you see this diagram everywhere so this is a cpu cpu has two parts so always we have learned that in the lower classes that there is one control unit and there is one alu that is arithmetic logic unit so that these are the two parts of your cpu okay so cpu that is central processing unit is nothing but your processor what is this processor you you always say okay i have a, a i3 processor right i5 i7 isn't it these are the processors this in fact this everything else is just optional you can say in fact not optional it is required but without this nothing can function because this is your main computer chip this is your main cpu this is your main processor so cpu central processing unit in short processor this is your processor this is your cpu this is the chip which is required for all the other parts i mean this is your main computer understand it okay so your cpu has two parts 
your processor has two parts that is cu which what is, what does the cpu uh, control unit does cu that is a control unit what exactly it does it takes instruction by instruction from the ram can you see the memory unit over here memory unit means ram all the program gets loaded onto the ram and from ram the control unit fetches the instruction and it will decode it decode means it will execute it okay and then the, your your program you can see the things happening in your program if you're running a video game and if you're uh, you know you're pressing the the uh, the page of arrow key and then the maybe you're uh, playing a racing car and you can see the car moving forward so everything happens with the help of your uh, CPU and under the CPU we have the control unit so it fetches the instructions from the RAM and then it will decode it and if there is any arithmetical or logical any calculation part to be done control unit will give instruction to the ALU and ALU will do the part of logical part or a arithmetical part it will perform it again uh, it will again go back to the memory then from there it goes to the goes back to the memory and from the memory it comes to the computer screen or it goes to the printer depends so input devices that is your keyboard your mouse whatever you do it that is the instruction to the cpu with the help of the, your ram so all the program gets loaded onto the ram instruction by instruction it will get decoded by the cpu and then we will get the output okay so that is what a processor is all about when we talk about processor in short that is a short word processor but normally that's a central processing unit so that is in short your processor so this is how your computer works there are a lot of things at the background that takes place you are just using that computer but uh, there are a lot of engineers and there are a lot of so many people have worked so hard behind this machine to make everything possible for the user user is never concerned about what exactly is happening at the background but at the background a lot of things are happening understand it okay so this is the computer overview this is the uh, architecture and this is how the things function okay so that's it for today bye for now